Today we have something out of the ordinary, and although there's rarely anything ordinary here on the channel, this is something really special. It's a zeta sum. It's the sum over the integers greater than or equal to 2 of the Riemann zeta function of n minus 1 divided by n. And the solution development is incredibly satisfying, and the result is beautiful, as you've seen in the thumbnail. So without further delay, let's call our sum here s so we have something to refer to. And where do we even begin here? Well, my approach invoked summoning the factorial function. I'm talking about the gamma function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my sum and I'm going to multiply upstairs and downstairs by n minus 1 factorial. So you have this term upstairs and this term here in the denominator times n. So the denominator, of course, simplifies out to n factorial. And in the numerator, you have zeta n times gamma n minus gamma n. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write this here as the sum over n of 1 by n factorial times zeta n times gamma n minus gamma n. And now to invoke a beautiful relation that I have proved here on the channel before, link in the description below. It's an integral resulting to the product of the gamma function and the zeta function. So it is beautiful indeed. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n minus 1 divided by e to the x minus 1 dx. And this sorts out to the Riemann zeta function evaluated at n times the gamma function evaluated at n. Indeed, that is a gorgeous integration result. And we're also going to invoke the, the gamma function here, where we know that gamma n equals the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times t to the n minus... Oh, sorry about that. I normally write it in the, uh, in the t world, so yeah, just out of habit, uh, times x to the n minus 1 dx. So what this means is... It means that your sum s can be written as the sum over the integers n greater than, greater than or equal to 2 of 1 by n factorial times this here can be written in this integral form as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n minus 1 divided by e to the x minus 1 dx minus the gamma function, which can be written, of course, as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times x to the n minus 1 dx. And next up, we can use the linearity of the integral operator and write this as the sum over n of 1 by n factorial times the integral from 0 to infinity. And I'm just going to factor out this x to the n minus 1 term inside. So you're left with 1 by e to the x minus 1 minus 1 by e to the x dx. Okay, cool. And now for some wonderful rearrangements of the summation and the integration operator. And it starts off by noticing, of course, that this 1 by n factorial term is independent of the x variable with respect to which you're integrating. So you can just slip it inside the integral operator. So you have the sum over n of uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of... I don't need these curly braces, to be honest. 1 by n factorial, and let me just um, adjust this for better visuals. Anyway, so we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by n factorial times x to the n minus 1 times 1 by e to the x minus 1 minus 1 by e to the x dx. And the golden question here is can we switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators? We need to talk about dominated convergence. And we see that this term here, the x to the n minus 1 divided by n factorial term, we see that out of, out of the two terms involving the index variable n, the factorial function grows much faster than the polynomial function. We know this, right? And similarly, for uh, these terms here in the curly braces, we have the reciprocals of exponential functions, which 
are of course decreasing functions. These reciprocals are decreasing functions. So we see no problems regarding convergence or boundedness. So yes, we can perform the switch up and we can write this as the integral from zero to infinity of the sum over the integers greater than or equal to two of x to the n minus one times n factorial times one by e to the x minus one minus one by e to the x dx. And now notice something really cool that these terms involving the exponential functions, they're independent of the index variable n. So we can just slip them outside the summation operator and we have the integral from zero to infinity of one by e to the x, oh, sorry about that, one by e to the x minus one, minus one by e to the x times the sum uh, over n of x to the n minus one divided by n factorial and we're integrating everything with respect to x of course. And now let's turn our attention towards this sum over n. Well, we can just write this here as x to the n minus one divided by n factorial summed over the integer starting from two, we could just write this as one by x times the sum over the integers again starting from two of x to the n divided by n factorial. And this can further be written as one by x times the sum over the non-negative integers n of x to the n minus n factorial minus x to the zero divided by zero factorial, which is just one of course, uh, minus x to the one divided by one factorial, which is x, of course. Okay, cool, and this here we know and love as the series expansion for the exponential function. So in fact, we have one by x times e to the x minus one minus x. And we can expand this by writing this as e to the x divided by x uh, minus one plus x divided by x. So that is the sum over the integers greater than or equal to two of x to the n minus one divided by n factorial. So we can take the information from this equation here and plug it into our integral representation of our sum. So this implies that s equals the integral from zero to infinity of one by e to the x minus one minus one by e to the x times e to the x divided by x minus one plus x divided by x dx. So we started off with a zeta sum and now we have this pretty cool looking integral. So this is definitely a nice time to like and subscribe. Anyway, so multiplying out these terms will give you some nice simplifications. So we end up with the integral from zero to infinity of e to the x divided by x times e to the x minus one uh, minus uh, this term here, one plus x divided by x times e to the x minus one minus e to the x divided by e to the x times x. So obviously they cancel out and you're left with this one by x term plus uh, one plus x divided by x times e to the x. And what I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna combine these two terms first. So I have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the x minus one minus x divided by x times e to the x minus one. And then I'm gonna just separate this term as well all in the uh, same step here. So minus the x term and we have x divided by e to the x minus one. Okay, cool. And let me see if I need any simplifications over here as well. I'm just gonna write this, uh, write this out like it is. And let me just, uh, wait, wait, let me just wait and see first. So I have some nice cancellations here. I'm left with a one by x term. And this is the positive one by x that cancels out with the negative one by x, which is very cool. Then I have this negative, uh, one by e to the x minus one term. Okay, cool. Let me just clean up this mess. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, quite nice. And uh, let me just expand this term here. So I go uh, one plus x divided by x times e to the x, right? So let me just write this as one by x times e to the x plus x divided by x times e to the x. Again, the x's cancel out quite nicely. And you have the reciprocal of one by e to the x. And let's just write this as e to the negative x divided by x, number one, because it looks really cool. And number two, it'll help us 
in a few moments. So once again, using the linearity of the integral operator, I have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x divided by x minus one by e to the x minus one dx plus the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x dx. Okay, so we started off with the Riemann zeta sum. We introduced the gamma function. And now we're going to introduce the digamma boy in the integral form. So we have digamma z being equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x divided by x minus e to the negative zx divided by 1 minus e to the negative x dx. And to draw some parallels between the first integral here and the digamma function, all we have to do is multiply upstairs and downstairs by e to the negative x, and that gives you uh, 1 minus e to the negative x over here. And we can see here on comparison that all this integral evaluates to is digamma 1, which is awesome. So this implies that s equals digamma 1 plus that integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x dx that evaluates to minus, uh, sorry about that, minus e to the negative x with the limits being 0 and infinity. So as x tends to infinity, we get a 0, and as, and as x tends to 0, we get a 1, a negative 1, so that cancels out, and we have a plus 1 here. And digamma 1 is, of course, the negative of the euler masferroni constant. So we have this beautiful result that the sum over the integers greater than or equal to 2 of zeta n minus 1 divided by n equals 1 minus the euler masferroni constant. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.